Oh, this is bullshit! I had a different video planned for today. And look, I know my curse. I do a reveals video, and there's a new reveal or leak the next day. That's how this works. But this time, I do my reveal video, get it done a day early, get it uploaded. And while it waits to come out, there are a couple more reveals. All right, there it is. There's the curse. We're through it at this point. Then comes the next day, and there are more reveals. And then there are yet more reveals. And God damn it, the last video is already completely outdated, and it hasn't even been three days. And I am not just going to let this stand. So here it is, two looking forward videos in a row. You lucky people. And please, if you could, help my channel grow by liking and subscribing. First up, I want to say that I made some guesses in the previous video that were wrong, and yet I already knew that they were because I talked about them in the video that preceded that one. I just forgot because, and say it with me now, I'm stupid. Like the fact that in the previous video, I already complained about how Dirge was going to be a package refresh of the Earthrise, so there's really no reason that I should have expected that the announced one would be anything other than an ER re-release. I gave myself hope to dash it expertly because my brain is poop. There's also the fact that I theorized that DevCon would be an 86 Scourge retool, which I maintain looks like the most logical thing he could be retooled from, and I can say that with confidence because at a point there was a fake leak with a custom Scourge figure being used as the basis, so I am not alone in believing that he would make a good DevCon. But I've already covered this being a deluxe before, so you know, more evidence that my brain is rancid dog do. Okay, before we get into the new reveals, let's go over some that I left out last time because I thought you guys wouldn't care, only for me to get inundated with questions as to why I didn't cover them. So Hasbro is bringing back Weapon Masters. They were a complete bomb in Siege that no one bought, but here's hoping that they do a little better this time. I will say that I do think they look cooler, which might actually help, because a lot of the Siege Weapon Masters were pretty visually lame, either too bulky or too impractical looking. There's this dog one, and I don't know, I'm not very inspired. I mean, he's a blue wolf thing, and is this supposed to be Steeljaw? Or that loser wolf thing? I mean, I think we're off to a pretty bad st- Whoa! Correction! Chainsaw dog! We are already in the black. You rip out a dog's spine, and that's a chainsaw now. That is a whole level of metal I had not considered being on the table. Then you got Cheetor, and this is just Lionizer again, isn't it? That's kinda lame. An engine for a hilt makes sense on a chainsaw, not so much for a regular sword. What the fuck are up with his feet? This doesn't have knees, but you gave it articulated front paws that are not part of the transformation. Why? Then you have Tigatron, who turns into a bow. And I do have to give this props, this is a much larger, more impressive bow than the one from Siege, but am I the only one whose brain keeps filling in the gaps and it goes from firing Tigatron faces to firing tiny, adorable kittens? I can't be the only one who sees this. His forehead wrinkles literally look like a little nose and mouth. Then you've got one lizardy boy, who everyone and their grandmother is like, this must be referencing Crocodile Megatron. And I'm not throwing shade on that. They're definitely right. I just don't have anything to add to that other than, did you know that Japan misinterpreted his alt mode so over there he was called Megaligator? Which is a fucking banger of a word combo. And the first time I have ever felt like Western Transformers is inferior to our Eastern brothers. Am I crazy or does this turn into a tiny version of Crocodile Megatron's tail gun? Lastly, you've got a tiny Rhinox, who is weird because he actually shows up in the movie full-sized. It turns into a minigun right off of a metal slug and I never knew I needed something so badly till I finally had it. Let's jump from talking about Rhinox to talking about Rhinox, the first of the leaks that happened before this video even had the chance to come out. So we have a look at the mainline Rhinox, who weirdly seems more accurate to what the movie is probably going to look like than most of the other mainline figures so far, as the rest of them seem a lot more in tune with their original show designs. The sculpt is interesting, but the colors are desperately dull. This needed something to give it literally any more life than muddy beige and gray. This honestly could have looked pretty cool with just a little more visual punch. And I guess posing it does help a little, though what's with the shoulder horn? That arm is definitely not the rhino head, we can see that on the back. Look, all I'm asking for is a little green. Don't make me customize this myself, I'm bad at it. And let's go over the elef- Rhino in the room. This will be better than the Kingdom one. There is literally no way it's not. That doesn't necessarily mean that this will be good. Those legs are a bit of a clusterfuck, and I'm not sure about how well it will be able to pose from these pictures, but at least he has hands that aren't tiny in violation of everything that the character is. All I'm saying is that being better than the Kingdom Rhinox is basically just a prize you get for showing up. The few figures that have actually come into being and were still worse are a cursed lot indeed. I will say that I'm a lot more open to this one being good just from pictures than I ever was for the Kingdom, even if his face looks like a terrifying samurai mask complete with eye holes. Then there's the Optimus, who I think just about everyone was justified in assuming was going to be a retool of the Bumblebee movie one. And when I initially saw these pictures, I was like, yep, exactly what I thought. Then I noticed the feet, and that caused me to look closer than that, and then I realized that no, this is in fact not even a little bit like the Bumblebee figure. This seems to be its entirely own new thing. Man, I was looking forward to not spending 30 bucks on an Optimus whose only difference was white eyebrows on his titty windows. Hey everyone, look! He's got the gun! Like the actual movie version should have! Get this Mega Buster bullshit out of my house! It's a lame concept, and it looks a hundred times lamer than it has any right to. Also, this is... 
Way smaller than a Voyager should be. Like, what the fuck? Why is he a full head shorter than the other two Optimuses? We are trending into big deluxe territory. He has the ass wheels of the Earthrise Prime, but they're mounted much higher, so while I can make the joke that the ER Prime had rubber butt cheeks, I'd say that these are too high for that joke. Also, light piping. Disgusting. What are the odds that it's going to be painted over? Stop trying to do light piping in the first place, but giving up on it when you realize that it looks like shit. It always looks like shit. Just don't do it in the first place. From this side, it's pretty clear that his titty windows are going to be one cast piece of clear plastic. As you can see, the eyebrows are translucent blue from here. Back of the alt mode has a huge gap in it, and the feet makes it look like a mini dump truck. Is that a parts forming trailer hitch? This figure looks like kind of a mess, but it also looks like a fun mess. Then let's talk about the huge news. Because of two whole frames in the G1 movie, Snarl has made his way into the 86 line. Hallelujah! Now, all we need is Swoop to be a leader and not a Voyager, and all of the slander on the 86 Dinobots will have been lies. Let me just say that this looks absolutely excellent. The 86 Dinobots continue to not disappoint. Except for Slag. But I do feel that what they've done with the head is interesting to say the least. At first I looked at it and was like, that's wrong. But you know, Snarl is the single Dinobot where they never really settled on a head for. Every frame, every figure, and every third party has been a different interpretation of it. And this one's really no more wrong than any of the others. After I realized that, I actually started to really appreciate this one. Even if it does look like early Black Helmet Megatron was trying to do a Galvatron cosplay by taping cardboard crown horns to his head. Happy to report that they haven't decided to start cheaping out on the scale now. And check it out, he's even got sword wielding wrists. And a sword, which is apparently made of rubber. Stop doing that! The back is supremely clean, and I actually love what they did with the tail sculpting. I've seen some figures texture the inside of it before, while yet others leave it flat because you aren't supposed to view it from the back, but even when it is sculpted, it's always just like random wires and pipes, internal structures meant to serve a purpose but don't look like anything. 86 Snarl here was like, screw that noise, and turned them into a set of wings. And that's sick as fuck! I also just have to commend this thing on the fact that there isn't a scrap of kibble on him, outside of maybe the collar. Sludge had the leg tails flaring out, and the spine... Osaurus, but that's supposed to be there. Meanwhile, Slag had more than a bit of mess going on from behind that loved to fall down, yet this is cleaner than you could ever dream. It will need some gap fillers for the bottoms of the wrists, though. And then I'm hearing that people are none too enthused with the alt mode, but man, I don't even know what you're on about. This is perfect. This is absolutely right up there with the rest of the 86 guys. Despite my love for the Giga Power figures, the 86 set is really shaping up to be the best Dinobots of all time. And as the Dino Squad, I just can't even put into words how happy I feel looking at them. Lastly, oh yeah, that's right, it's Space Jazz. Oh, 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 we are eating good tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Is it weird that they did this before Space Wheeljack, despite the fact that Wheeljack had way more screen time on Cybertron, and they've been planning a Space Wheeljack for like three years at this point, and they have an easy figure to retool it from? Yes. Do I care right now? Nah. Let's be clear, this thing has some problems. I don't know why his chest hood is so tall. Who is this Jazz has a tiny waist brigade, and why do they have so much control? They could have made his waist taller and his tits less saggy, but no, don't you understand that Jazz has a tiny waist? How are we supposed to get off if he doesn't have a short waist? It's not that big a deal, it's just weird that it's always like this. And then his shins are pretty ugly, with how they're cut halfway into, and the fact that they are overall too wide. Also, this thing totally stole the 86 head. They also did the thing in the product photography again where they stuck the figure behind the insert. Looks like he's in a sleeping bag using his accessories as a pillow. But let me not gripe too much. This looks awesome, and I am thrilled with what I'm seeing. The alt mode is so good! And you know what? Space Bumblebee took a lot of compromises in the robot mode to have the perfect alt mode, and this has that immaculate vehicle mode. It looks exactly like what it's supposed to, to the point it's kind of glorious. So I will happily take a less than perfect robot mode, and the Bumblebee still managed to be excellent on the posing and looked pretty damn cool to boot nonetheless. We can see that this is going to be exactly the same size as Skids, so it's going to be a reasonable size for a deluxe, though not a big one to be sure. I love what I see, and I can't wait to get my hands on it, and the eventual guaranteed to be happening, there's no way they won't do it, I will kill you if you don't, Wheeljack. And hey, here's hoping they do a more accurate Tetra Jets as well, because sure, the Seed one was a great figure, but it didn't exactly look right. Wow, last time I was almost all negative, and this time I was super positive. Well, super positive for me, you know? But I liked to loved literally everything I looked at in this one, and that's kind of refreshing. I know I kind of revel in being a wet blanket, but sometimes it's nice to be happy. Maybe I should try it more often. Nah, who would I be without the rage? And that's not half what I have to say, but it's enough what I have to say. And I know, you know, what everyone else tells you to do at the end of these videos. So, if you liked what you saw here, please do that. And if you'd like to take it a step further, then please, share this video with any friend you think may be interested. I hope you all enjoyed listening to me waste your time.